Committee. I'm City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge, Chair, and I'm joined by Ward 2 City Councilor Karen Foster, Vice Chair. Ward 1 City Councilor Michael Quinlan and Ward 7 City Councilor Rachel Mayor. This meeting is called to order. Roll call, Laura. Sure. Councilor LaBarge. Present. Councilor Foster. Here. Councilor Mayori. Here. And Councilor Quinlan. Here. Thank you. This meeting is being held via Zoom and audio video recorded. Next item on the agenda is public comment. Is there any member of the public who would like to address the committee on any subject? I don't see any participants, Laura. Right. Being no members of the public present, there is no public comment. The next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of December 7th, 2020. Move to approve. Will be no Second. action. No. Oh, sorry. Sorry no about that. I didn't jumped. Didn't no quite action get is needed for the minutes of December 7th, 2020. They are not ready for acceptance. Right, Laura? That's correct, unfortunately. Sorry, I was reflexively moving. <laughs> um, we have Parks and Recreation Department, and we have our department head, Anne Marie Mojo, to have us counselors more learn more about the behind scenes operations of that department and how it is operating since you had to transfer your department to remote operation following the shutdown in March. I'm going to start by turning the floor over to department head Anne-Marie Mojo so she can update us counselors on her department activities. As you do know, Anne-Marie, counselors do have specific questions for you once, have finished, once you have finished your information. So thank you, Anne-Marie. I'm going to also open up the floor to questions or comments from the counselors once you do finish your information. Thank you. Sure. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me on this, on this nice snowy day here. Um, so I'm not sure if any of you are on our, um, our constant contacts when we send those out. Some of you, I think, are. Uh, we have actually been able to do programming over the past pretty much almost a year since this COVID craziness started. It, um, last March we shut down and then we started to think about what can we do? And actually some of the, the COVID, some of it really helped us to sit back, take a look at what we were doing, um, really pivot, restructure some of the ways that we do do things and also come up with some different new programming, which has been really cool that we hadn't necessarily thought about how to do in the past. So, um, you know, although there's been a lot of, a lot of uh, things that have come about with COVID and a lot of things we haven't been able to do, there's been a lot of new things that we were able to do, which was really a cool thing um, to, to bring to the community. Um, the staff was creative. We started with a variety of new programs as well as sort of restructuring and modifying traditional ones. So going back to last spring, when we first started um, figuring out what this virus would allow us to do and not do, we were able to really promote a lot of outdoor recreation in our area that um, doesn't necessarily bring us in any income, but it does what we were supposed to do, which is get everyone outside, a lot of hiking and biking and trails that so many people didn't even realize were here in town. Um, probably every single one of us did something that we didn't even realize was there. I know I did, and I am in recreation. So, um, so that was really cool to get people, and they're still doing it. People are out there even this winter, still on the trails and um, hiking and and doing those kinds of things. Um, we started virtual programming, which you know everyone seems to be having to do now. We were able to do some of that when we first started out. We started out with a virtual 50k, which was a lot of fun last spring, and can't believe it was. It was that long ago. Um, we work with the school, uh, the, the health department with everything, obviously, since the beginning. 
we've worked with them to make sure every day there was new new regulations pretty much um, never mind every week on how we could offer different things safely to the public I mean at one point I think we were making signs to stay off of everything don't touch anything the playgrounds the you know everything we had signs all over the place um, and as it slowly we slowly learned a little bit more and we were able to open up and do more we work with the uh, um, DPW parks cemetery and tree to forestry division I think they're called now um, we work really close with them to uh, do maintenance and, and op operations of the different parks and facilities that we have. So we started um, doing that in June. We were able to start looking at our, our outdoor programming with health department and the state regulations and saying, what, what can we do out there? So we started for our own programming that we actually run. We um, started looking at the beach and opening up the beach and those kinds of things. I actually have a document that um, I think, is it okay for me to just share my screen if I can, if I do it or should I send that to you, Laura? You have to give me permission, right? Yes, let me give you permission right now. Okay, all right. Okay. Making you co-host. Okay. Would allow you. I the only thing that should be on my screen. So let's see if I can do it right. Um, share screen and I'm bombed into my, I'm guard into my work computer. So hopefully screen, there it is, share, okay. All right, so you see our programming during COVID-19. Is it showing for everybody? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. All right, so I'll just go through this a little bit um, to show you some of the stuff we were able to do. Um, we opened Musani Beach in July and we were doing our virtual 50K throughout the spring also. Some of the different things that we had to do like with the beach, it was, we had to make spots for everybody. You had to pre-register, you could walk into what pre-registering was preferred. And the spots were so far apart from each other and everyone, you know, they, they got their spot when they got there. And uh, it was it was interesting for sure. And it, it, it worked. Um, we, throughout the summer, we did some outdoor programming, which is obviously a lot easier than indoor programming. We did all those different kinds of things that are listed there, basketball, soccer, cross country. Tennis was super popular, obviously, at, um, at the courts, tennis and some pickleball at the JFK courts. We had tennis lessons for kids and adults. We did girls lacrosse, field hockey. Um, this fall, we were able to do youth soccer. We spread them out inside the, some of the baseball fields and had them, so you had one way to go in and sanitize and go in and play and then another way to go out. And, um, so that was, that worked really well. We did golf lessons. A couple of our new things we did was the kickball league and wiffle ball, which uh, the adults I know loved the kickball league and the wiffle ball for kids and um, they, they had a blast doing that. We had some outdoor recess classes. We teamed up with a com couple companies. One of them was Wicked Cool for Kids and we had an online vet school. So they had to come and pick up we their supplies and bring them home and then did the stuff from home. We had different Legos classes and, um, and different things like that. Basketball, um, this winter, we only have use of the Smith Vocational High School gym right now. And we're using it on weekends on Saturdays and Sundays. They have been super to work with there. We've been doing programs in there since beginning of November or so. Um, then we paused over the holidays and waited for the holidays to be gone and, and things like that. And then we started up again a week or two ago, a couple weeks ago um, for the indoor program. So we have basketball going on in there. It's super modified. It's not what you think about basketball. It's, it's skills. It's not scrimmages. It's not games. Um, if just to get a quick visual of the basketball, actually there's a picture right here of one of the kids doing dribbling, but it, everyone has masks on. There's only nine kids on each side. They bring their own basketball. You have to sanitize when you get there, sanitize throughout. Um, if they share a basketball at all, we have clean basketballs and then we have a bin of basketballs that need to be sanitized. So everything is, um, we went back and forth multiple times with the health department. So everything is um, really, done well in there, um, spaced out and all that. Um, we also have a gym warrior class that 
is like a gym class, like a, like a regular school gym class, because they're not really getting that right now. So we have some kids in there doing certain times of certain kinds of games, again, that are all physically distanced and bracelet making also is going on in there right now. Um, so those are some small, we're doing them in like three and four week sessions. And then we see how things are going. We refine them again with the, with the health department pretty much every week. And then we'll be starting up new sessions again, end of February, beginning of March. Um, for the adult programs, we did tennis, we did softball, these are some of the things throughout the summer we did some virtual classes right now for adults we have um, a couple virtual classes going then one program for families we have is observing the night sky which obviously some nights you can't do like tonight but it's once a week and it's a really cool program that people, some families are really loving that we did this fall and we're doing another winter session if you like to bundle up um with some of the independent programs that we're, that we um, work with. So we work with different groups to allow them to use city facilities. So this past summer, we worked with Girls on the Run, Northampton Soccer, Baseball, and Legion Baseball. To We worked with them, facilitated with the health department um, to allow them to play their games. Um, that was all outdoor this summer and fall, and that all went pretty well. It was all a learning process as they went along with wearing masks throughout playing the sports, but it all worked and everybody uh, was able to get outside, which was great. Um, let's see, a couple of the special events we did, the Halloween decorating contest, which I, I know Karen's family we visited. Uh, that was so fun. And to go around and visit around town and see all those, we had Cereos and uh, Friendly's donate for prizes for that. So that made it even, even more fun to go and and hand those out to the families and packs to the families that entered. Um, and then for the holidays, there, um, one of our staff made a map of everybody who entered for people to just go around and see all the different lights and, and things that were up. Uh, so those are the things we did throughout the year so far. Um, we're currently working on pool use and getting into JFK. Uh, we're working with the health department for that. We're getting our regs down and then once we get access to the schools, which we have not yet, um, we will hopefully open the pool up for the public to use at least on the weekends. We're starting to look at our spring programs and all those, getting those set. We were not able to do summer camps last year because it was so it was so crazy trying to figure out all those regs with the state. And they came up, out with final regulations at like the end of June, which gave us no time to, to really plan and um, one of the things we really rely on is use of school facilities. So that was a big question mark last summer. We weren't allowed in their facilities either at that point. So, um, but this summer things are looking, obviously looking a little better and looking up and we are working on summer programs and camp, um, and camp things. So those are the programs. Does anyone have questions on those before I go on to a little bit of budgeting or different things that uh, you had asked me about. I guess you can stop sharing if you would like to, unless, and I can send that if people want it. I can send that to Laura. There we go. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Off of that. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Just going to mute myself for one second. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Fun having the kids home studying, right? <laughs> What's for supper? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so any questions on the programming? Right. Yep, I'm gonna open the floor to questions or comments from our okay. counselors. Okay. Counselors? Does anybody wanna speak? Not yet. Um, not yet. Okay. Okay. All right, so I have, um, I know there was a variety of different questions people had, so I'm going to go over some of the other things that we are working on right now. So we're working on some capital projects with different departments. So a couple of them, 
one that um, the public has seen the most lately is the dismantling of Safety Village, which was sad and scary, but exciting at the same time because the buildings really needed a lot of work. It was determined with various departments that they were not really able to be fixed um, without a great deal of, of money being put in, into them and we weren't sure how that would work out. So those were about 20 years old, which is crazy that we built them that long ago. So we've been working with the um, Central Services has the capital project, um, that capital improvements project. It's about $80,000 that they have um, in the budget for the new buildings and the, and the um, putting the structures in and those kinds of things. We've been there with the uh, DPW Parks Division, cleaning them out and doing all that. They took them all down, the DPW did in the past couple weeks. And the new buildings are supposed to be coming. They're supposed to actually come this week, which is kind of silly with, <laughs> with the snow right now. So we will see um, the dental services coordinating that. So I just wait for them to tell me when they're going to be coming. They're coordinating it with DPW. And then they will be delivered and placed where the other ones were. So they're just really not, they're nice shed type buildings that are coming, you know, pre-made. Um, and they should be really nice when they come in. We will then be figuring out a way to put the signage on them for people to sponsor. So if you've seen it in the past, there's uh, the different businesses or people or groups have been able to um, pay a certain amount, donate a certain amount of Safety Village and we'll put whatever their logo or different things are on the side of the buildings. So we'll have some kind of signage we'll be placing on them rather than painting the sides of the building. Sorry, folks. Be putting signs on there. Um, and then We'll be working to do that to have safety village going this summer. So um, the staff is working on what the format will be and once the once the buildings come in and we see how the best way to sign to hang signs and things on them. So that will be cool and exciting. Um, that place gets used a lot for a lot more things than just safety village program that we do. The parent center has been using it. Um, the playground there is really cute and, and fun. The pavilion provides a great spot for birthday parties and gatherings and things. So that park is used a lot for, for a lot of different things. So that, that little area will be great to have it up and, and fixed up and looking really good. Uh, we're also working for capital improvements on safety netting at Florence Fields. So there is 140 or 145,000 to do the netting around the baseball fields. There's two fields there. Baseballs go flying all over. Um, we hope to be finishing and fundraising again more fundraising for the playground put in for some capital improvement money for that too but also the playgrounds the um different amenities to the park uh we had we were ready to go to put in batting cages and scoreboards last year right before COVID hit the dpw was going to be installing a lot of that that obviously has been put on hold and so now we're trying to figure out if they'll still be able to do that or not with what they have for staffing and abilities um, coming up in the spring. Otherwise we'll be looking to get that done in other ways. Um, so, but that safety netting, we're working with Berkshire Design. It's ready to go out to bid. They should be putting that out within the next, within this month of February to get that out and get all that netting up there. So that will be really good when that's done. They also, Temple Services put new roofs on the building at Museum Beach, the um, bathing house where the restrooms are in the office and also at our Canem Field, they put a new roof on the bathroom slash storage building. So um, that was all done with capital improvements this summer. We are working with the um, with Wayne, Fiden and planning to look at the um, possible design of an additional swimming area in Northampton. So there is, they, they have um, contracted or they are about to with, um, I don't know how to, I'm not sure the pronouncing, pronounce it, but it's Wright Ostermeyer Landscape Architects, which is WOLA, W-O-L-A. They're um, based in Northampton. So the uh, planning is uh, engaging them to do data collection, uh, stakeholder and community meetings, design concepts, and 25% design for they're looking at six different areas and you may be familiar with that, or I'm not sure, um, six different areas in town, five along the Mill River, five different areas along the Mill River, as well as the Connecticut River Greenway down off of Damon Road where the 
boathouses and the access to the river there for canoes and kayaks. Um, so they're looking at that because there's a little beach area there that formed um, over the past couple of years. So that's another area they're gonna be looking at. So they have engaged them for that. Let's see, I think that was the capital project. Some of you asked about some different questions about our staffing and things like that. Our full-time staff has been working. Um, we, we were saying, I think you work, we worked harder last year to do the program smaller than we ever had to work in our life, which was, you know, which was a great experience for everybody to really, like I said, pivot and come up with all the new programs and different things that we've done. So we don't, obviously, one thing we're lacking um, is our part-time staff. We weren't able to hire the summer camp, the college students, the high school students, a lot of those, which is a bummer. Those, that's always the best time of the year with, it, with them all around and the fun that they bring to the kids in the community. So we're hoping to be able to do that again this summer and, and start that back up. We, were, we have had some, some of them working, the ones that we were able to keep a few of them engaged with some of the programs that we did. So that was good. Um, for, let's see, as far as budgeting. So there was a couple questions about our revenue. We obviously have not brought in as much revenue as we normally would. Our full-time staff, part of our budget is paid for out of our revolving fund with some of the receipts from our program. So normally I think it's around 50, what did we say, 56,000 about in total for the salaries. And as of this past fiscal year, we brought in around 26,000, which isn't bad for, for what, uh, when we added it all up a few weeks ago, I thought, wow. Um, so the rest of it, if you think about it, it is actually fiscal year. So we have from now until July 1 to bring in um, more of that funding for, for FY21. So that includes the, pay, pre, the payments for summer camp. Those come in this year, even though it, the camp doesn't take place till the summer, the money all comes in in the spring, T-ball, um, some of the other programs that we'll be doing, the money will be coming in. So I'm hoping that we hit some of that, um, in, at least for the... Um, for the staffing part, we do, we do supposed, we are supposed to bring in other income to help cover, like say the pool expenses at the pool. Um, but we don't, we don't have any expenses right now, unfortunately, but, um, so the income we're not, we don't have to cover any of the, the expenses that have been there. We will hopefully open, like I said, within a month or two, and then, um, we would, you know, we're going to be having to figure out how to to, to get that income in to cover because we we cover all of our expenses there. Self, we're self-supporting for the most part um, for what we do there. So yes, we haven't, you know, we have not, definitely haven't brought in all the income that we normally do, but we also haven't had a bunch of those expenses that we normally do. So good and bad, that's kind of what where we are with that stuff. Um, let's see, I think, I think that is most of the questions that I, I remember seeing. I don't know if there's something else you'd like to ask. Counselor Heinlein, did you want to speak? Well, I, I did uh, send along a question. Well, let, let me let me back up for a second and just thank you for your presentation today. Uh, and also thank you for you and your staff, you know, listening to you talk about having to kind of rethink what you've done. And I mean, the challenges that this presents, I mean, everybody talks about the challenges, but the fact that you've really kind of risen to the occasion here and, and put on some very fun programming. We actually took a ride around and saw not all of the, but a number of the houses that were on the yeah. holiday uh, map. And, uh, and had some fun that evening. And so I, I, I thank you for that. that. That's really great. And I appreciate the presentation. Um, you know, and, and then I had sent a question along about the Parks and Rec Commission um, that you haven't yeah. had a meeting, but then I yeah. noticed on the city calendar that you're meeting maybe later today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so that question was answered. And, and then the other questions that I had, you answered. Um, and I also, I just wanted to, oh, yeah, would you, yes, please send that to, to Laura, the, your presentation, so we, okay. we can send that along to people. Um, and then, uh, oh, I, and I was glad to hear about the Smith Volk, uh, that they've been a really good partner there. That, that's important. I think that Jim, uh, as you and I know from our childhood here in Northampton, that Jim was always a part of our, our rec lives uh, growing up. So that, that was great. Um, and then... 
the last thing, oh, and then I, and then I wanted to, on a personal note, thank you uh, also. I'm, I'm not going to get into the details here, but you, you helped me with a little problem here in Ward 1, and I'm, I was grateful for right. that, that uh, we were able to find a, a really good resolution there. Um, and uh, I think that might be it. Um, I'm scribbling here. Uh, yeah, I think, well, I was going to ask you about the pavilion at, at Arcanum. Uh, is that, are, are people able to reserve that? Mm -hmm. Yep, we do. Um, we have reservation. We do some programming under there, and then other people reserve it for. There's been a lot of like neighborhood parties, sure. birthday parties, gatherings, and things. Sure, yeah, people and they, people use it. Um, and they do that right through yeah. the rec department. Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect. Okay. Yes, actually. Um, and to that point, actually, people have because of this, a lot of people have been. Um, wanting to use facilities a lot more, wanting to get outside. People who have indoor facilities have looked to, obviously towards the parks and things. So we worked late fall, hopefully launched for this spring ways for people to actually use more, use the pavilions for more programming type things. So great. Rather than well, just parties. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I, that's what I have for you. So thank you very much. Thank you, counselor. Yeah. Um, Anne Marie. I have, um, I, I wanna thank you. You've answered the uh, six questions that was sent to you from me, but there's okay. one question I did forget. I'm very concerned about our children and our youths with disabilities. <laughs> what type of programs do you actually have for children in wheelchairs or whatever of their disabilities? Could you talk a, a, a little bit about that, please? So we don't have specific programming that we target for um, children or people with disabilities. We modify programs as we need to. If people want to join, um, we, we work with everybody. Um, there are groups that do do programming and for, for all different kinds of abilities, I believe Karen was part of or still a part of, right? Um, one of the major of, ones in yeah. the area. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought so. Um, which we actually did programming with years ago. Um, wait, probably five years ago or so, but um, that we help promote or do, you know, different kinds of things. But so I would say anyone, you know, we welcome anybody into programs. We've had children, adults, you know, with various um, things that they've needed accommodations for different things. And we work to, to figure it out and, and make sure they're included. That that makes me happy to hear that because especially at Ryan Road School, Jackson Street School, Lead School, we do have some of the young children with disabilities who are in wheelchairs and so forth. And I, I just feel in my heart that they should be part of whatever you're doing with the rec department, that they should be highly involved in the rec department and our community. That's how I feel about it. Sure. Thank, thank you. Councilor Mior. Yeah, thanks for being here, Anne Marie. I, um, you know, the rec department has been such an integral part of my child, my children's memories, and they they still remember Safety Village. And you know, it's just it's amazing. You know, when I became a parent, like I realized how formative uh, those rec experiences are, and I'm really grateful. I think it's really a vibrant um, program we have here. I just had I had a couple of specific questions and I just had a general question where I was just thinking about a really the self-funding model that you, you have to contend with. I mean, it must, it just seems, you know, it seems like, uh, I, I'd like to hear if you, any challenges around that. It sounds like, so there is a revolving fund a little bit and there are probably some grants, correct? Um, but it just, I was thinking about it last um, spring that that's really a tough, that can be a tough model in a situation like a pandemic um, because you can't, um, it's hard to be creative if you don't know if you're going to be making money back. You can think of a great program, but it's new and you're having to, um, I'm sure, I, and I, no doubt you were working really, really hard because it's probably just like teachers. You're having to reinvent all these ways to do things and the headspace that that takes up is a lot. So if you could just speak to like maybe the challenges around the self-funding model and, um, you know, I kind of, I guess I wish there was more subsidizing that we could do you know, at the rec department, I'm sure we all feel that way. Yeah, I, um, you know, it's been, it's always been that way since I've 
since I've been a part of the department, which is a long time. Um, and, you know, before, as, as I always used to hear from my former boss, 1981, when Prop Two and a Half came along, you know, everything changed. And um, <laughs> yeah. so that was when everything used to be free. And people still ask me, why can't you have, you know, things at every park and, you know, like, they, like they used to when they were kids and well, cause it's not, you know, a model that we can afford um, anymore because we have to, you know, charge for everything. So um, I think it is a challenge in a lot of ways because we want to, we're very cognizant of keeping the price low enough that people can afford it, um, that the average person can afford it as well as, you know, if not have a scholarship. Um, you know, we do have scholarship funds from different um, tournaments or golf tournaments or things that people have donated to over the years. Um, but, it, you know, sometimes people are, they're, they don't really want to ask, they're, they're nervous to do that. So um, we, we, that is a challenge to try to keep things. You know, last year, one of the big complaints with Museum Beach, even though we really busted hard to, to keep it open or to get it open and have it, was that it was too expensive. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, conducive to pay $5 a day or things like that for people to come. Um, so that was really hard and it was a challenge. And, you know, we, we ended up towards the middle of summer trying to reduce it a little bit as best we could. Um, so, you know, we've always, it, it is, I mean, I've always, you know, wished that there was a little bit, you know, more from the city side, but we've been able to do it. It's just how we've always worked and operated. And um, I think, you know, we do get grants for different things, but it's not usually programming grants that are available. It's usually capital improvement grants that are available, you know, to build something or something that then you have to charge to use <laughs> in some ways, not all the time, but, but um, for, for some things. So hopefully, you know, in, in the future, you know, we'll still, we, we, our community has been really supportive and we've been able to offer things, but yeah. you know, as, as our, as our budget moves ahead. I mean, this has definitely shown a lot of things we did. We didn't get income for, and we just, you know, try to do them best we could. So it's, it's, it's not easy, but. Um. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I will say that, you know, there's been times my children have, re have received um, uh, scholarships and the process, I can believe how helpful and nice everyone was with that process. It's sometimes hard as a parent to you know, seek help like that. And I was just really, I felt really my hand held through the whole thing, getting camp um, discounts and all that. So you guys do a really great job on that front. I do hope, you know, I, I've told Wayne this too, you know, I hope with this grant with the water recreation that there is some way to subsidize it. We're dealing with swimming hole issues in Leeds, as you know, being from Leeds. Um, and I do think the price, you know, at Musanti, it's, it's not gonna offset people using the river for free. So we're gonna to have to think about how to support the rec department so that that can actually be a viable alternative. Um, you know, I'd pay sometimes and then sometimes my family frankly would wait till six o'clock because you know, on a regular basis, it's just, it's, but I understand why it's like that. I'm just hoping that, um, that, that Wayne and uh, the planning department can provide support around the water recreation piece. Because I think as the, frankly, as the summers get hotter, it's gonna be more of an issue. And, you know, Wayne had, um, the country club cooled down as a water recreation site. Uh, uh, and I was like, that's, it's not an affordable one. Let's just put it that way for a lot of people. So we really need to think about how that will, and that's not to put on your department, um, but. Uh, well, no, it, it, it is for, I mean, that's one thing we talk about in those, when we talk about the, the swimming holes or wherever, it's, whatever it's gonna happen, like wh who's gonna support it? You know, DPW Parks Division does all the maintenance. Can they support those things? How? You know, is it it's going to be an informal, you know, thing, or is it going to be something that we we staff with guards somehow, and and you know, so it's as safe as possible. And so, yeah, it is. It's it's going to be tricky, but you know, the support. You know. Yeah. Um, I have a resident who wanted me to ask about the pool. She's been she emails me every yeah. month about the pool. So you said in a month or so. I mean, how are you going to plan? Yeah. This it seems like really challenging yeah. plan this spring and summer because you're putting out all these resources and you, you know, hopefully it'll go okay, but there's a possibility you'll have to pull them all up or I don't know, it seems challenging. Is the pool kind of, are you playing it by ear? So the pool, I think the big challenge, well, first it was getting into the schools because there wasn't, just because of different school related um, issues and regulations, whatever it was with, with the groups that they, the public wasn't going to be allowed in there. Um, 
now it's, you know, actually they are, the school department is, um, has a, uh, their personnel, they're looking for a custodian for the weekend. So right now there's no custodian, there's no one to work. Oh. And that, that person cleans the whole pool and will be doing all the cleaning and they don't have anybody. So that's actually just been reposted again. So that's one of the, you know, major points that needs to be filled for the job um, before we're allowed in there. Our staffing will have to, you know, get all the, it'll take us a couple of weeks once they say, go ahead, because we have to restructure the staff and um, get them all, make sure they're um, all up to par for their um, guarding certifications and things. So, um, so, you know, I keep saying we said a month in because the, the school committee, I think it was October voted to let us in. And so we were really oh. hopeful in, in October, the school committee said, go ahead. And then there was all these other, you know, things that happened that we weren't still some other walls that are up that won't. So I keep saying a month, <laughs> I hope. I, I mean, we're- I we won't have, hold you to it. <laughs> yeah, we have the plan into the health department. We've gone back and forth with them, how it would work for in and out and cleaning. And so we need the custodian and then, you know, that will be really close. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. Yes. Yes, Councilor Foster. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Thank you so much for that, that overview and all you're doing to sort of build community and, and help kids and adults stay active. I know um, just how important that is uh, to so many people and for the inspiration to decorate our house with scary spiders. Yeah. Um, but the rec department really did an amazing job uh, with that as well. So thank you for that. Um, I just had two questions for you. Um, one was just my memory was jogged when you mentioned um, making sure your staff are up to date with certifications and things. And I was curious, have you been able to keep, uh, you know, are, are they able to access lifeguarding classes and first aid CPR or are you relying on certifications that have extended through the pandemic? Um, there are people who are gonna need their research when, it, when we start, we haven't had any access to any pools or anything. So some people will need their recertifications. Um, fortunately, Jim, Miller, who is our rec supervisor in charge of the pool and the beach and the aquatics and other adult programs, he um, is certified to teach um, those. So he he recertifies people um, when we need to, once we can get into a pool and things. So so that's that's a really we're lucky to have him. Oh, that that's an amazing way then that you can help yeah. your staff ramp up. Okay. Yeah. Then my other question for you was around um, demand for the programs. Did were there the programs you offer, did you meet the community demand? Were there waiting lists? Were there programs that you thought would take off that didn't? How'd that go? Um, I think they, a couple of them had small waiting lists and then we would try to add add um, like the, some of the youth team programs like the soccer and, and the basketball that we're doing currently. Um, started out with waiting lists and then we figured out how to expand them and add another hour or add another session as long as we got somebody to coach. Um, <laughs> So it seems like most things we've been able to meet what demand is there. Um, I think once we move outside, we'll have more, you know, a lot more people coming out of the woodwork to do things. But yeah, it doesn't, it seems like we've been able to fulfill what we could do. So. Any other counselors would like to speak again? Okay, no, thank you. Anne-Marie, I want to thank you very much, all of us counselors, for coming in, doing your presentation, mm -hmm. and we want to thank you and all your employees for working under such difficult times in our city with the COVID. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, thank you for having me, too. It was fun to, like, I mean, I've looked back and we knew what we did, but it was really fun to actually write it all on a list for you and be like, wow, I forgot about this, and this was so cool, and... <laughs> Wow, we'll have fun. you come back so you can give us some further um, updates. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. It's always nice to see everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Bye. I'll Bye, send you that document, Laura. Thanks. Okay. Good luck. Oh, we learned a lot on that one. Um, we have our next items, which is referrals to committees and um, 21.
1.187 appointments to various committees referred by city council on January 21st, 2021. We have two appointments on the arts council. I have Dana Osterling, 58 Paradise Road, apartment one North Bampton. And her term is February, 2021 through June, 2024 to fill a vacancy. I had a lengthy talk with Dana. She, she's just unbelievable, unbelievable. We could just talk and talk and talk. Um, so what we talked about was what she can do to be on the Arts Council. She's saying to me, which she wrote to me again, Thank you so much for considering my application to be appointed as a member of the North Vietnam Arts Council. My interest in this position is based on my longstanding participation in the arts community in Massachusetts and my commitment to advocate for the inclusion of marginalized voices and identities in the art world. As a music therapist, I often worked with people who have a deep connection and personal investment in the arts, but lack, but lack the resources or means to create and participate at the same level as those who have been afforded greater privilege to do so through their socioeconomic positions, their status, or their connections. A wide breadth of research demonstrates that involvement in the arts is linked to the improved health of individuals and communities. And that knowledge is what motivates her to work towards a future where access to the arts is our own beloved community here in Northampton is more equitable. As an artist and musician, she have worked professionally as a cellist, a songwriter and a guitarist and earned a degree from Berkeley College of Music. I certainly feel I can bring my expertise to the conversation, but more importantly, as someone who has dated, dedicated my career towards uplifting others through their connections to music. I have had the opportunity to learn a great deal about the power art can have to change lives. It would be an honor to contribute to the wonderful work that the Arts Council is already doing to support such a mission. As we discussed on the phone, this is a crucial time in our community to rebuild. And my girl goal in working with the Arts Council would be to dedicate energy towards supporting the vibrant community of artists that Northampton has always been known for cultivating. As those artists are working tirelessly to support others through their expression. I believe art is for everyone and that art has the power to drive change. I think prioritizing the work of BIPOC artists, LGBTQIA and artists and emerging artists is of the utmost importance as we move forward and making our community safe, welcoming, and a true representation of progress, progressive ideas. I would like to forward to working towards these goals alongside the other mem members of the Arts Council, whom I dearly respect for their shared commitment to these priorities. Thank you again for considering my appointment Please feel free to share this email with the other members of the city council or whomever else has taken part in the decision making process. I so appreciate your hard work and dedication to our town. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. All the best, Dana. She was just amazing to talk to on the phone and she does participate quite a bit at the Cooley Dick also with her music and so forth. So. Like I said, I think we spent about 45 minutes on the phone. It was well worth talking to her. So that's my report on Dana. And um, I will give my, um, I gave you my whole report. So I move forward the recommendation of Dana 
Ostering to the Arts Council with a positive recommend recommendation for to full city council. I need a second. Second. We have a motion in the second. Is there any discussion? If not, roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. I hope I get this last, her first name right. Also for an appointment in the Arts Council, we, is it Thulani Davis? I, that was the very first question I had for her. It's Tulani. Tulani? Tulani. Tulani. Thank you, Councillor. 112 Franklin Street, Northampton. Her term, February 2021 through June 2024 to fill a vacancy. And um, Councillor Foster, can you give us your report on your conversation with the applicant, Tulani Davis? <laughs> Sure. Yeah, Tulani and I had a, a great conversation. Um, you know, it's it's been interesting to me because we've had quite a few applications to the Arts Council over the last couple of months. Yeah. Um, and I feel like there's been an, an interest um, a, among many about, you know, expanding interest uh, or access to the arts, um, you know, kind of uh, what what determine who determines what art is, how arts are getting funded. And Tulani's application was very, um, you know, kind of in line with that. Um, she is a dancer. Um, she's grown up, her mom is the founder and director of a, a school, a dance school um, in Hartford. And, uh, you know, very, uh, when, when I talked to her about, you know, she talked about she's, um, She's uh, Filipino as well as black. And so living in Northampton, but then traveling to Hartford, a community with more diversity, um, you know, to work in the arts. And, and she's just kind of has grown up participating um, in this dance school um, and how much that has meant to her. And one of the things she, she talked about was viewing uh, equity to access in the arts, not through, she called it, referred to it as a black white binary but really considering that artists of color uh, belong in all art spaces um, and to really think about, it's not just promoting, uh, for example, artists um, who identify as black, but thinking about, um, you know, kind of who traditionally has not had access to participate and to fund whose art may not have always caught the eye of the decision makers and ensuring that um, access to those disciplines and for those artists is promoted. Um, you know, and we talked a little bit about the funding uh, process with, with making grants um, for different art projects. And, you know, she talked about how she's usually at the other side of the table and she participated um, or observed the last Arts Council meeting and, and how interesting it was to be on the other side of the table, um, you know, sort of that evaluation of applications. And um, I asked her if she saw any of that kind of as a, as a barrier um, to people receiving funding. And, and so, you know, of course, uh, but, you know, she talked about how there can be intentional education, um, you know, to really teach people um, how to participate in the arts. She talked about, you know, with kids, teaching them that they can participate in the arts, not just on stage, but as a tech doing lighting, sound, you know, all of those other opportunities. Um, so it's really, you know, I, I think that her perspective would be incredibly valuable in the Arts Council, um, you know, as, as the idea of promoting arts in Northampton and really just that that focus on expanding who's participating, how are they participating, and who needs a, a, a hand um, or, or a door opened um, to, to invite them um, to the table to participate. Um, so um, the other thing that was really interesting about Tulani is that she also um, teaches at the Sojourner Truth School, and, um, you know, she talked about the importance of of, of helping people, um, you know, feel empowered, standing up for themselves, um, you know, finding their voices and using those voices. And, and um, you know, we did talk about how as a young person, her application said under 29, but she referred to something as 30 years. So it's possible she's had a birthday since then. Um, but as a young person of color, sort of having to recognize that she belongs at these tables um, where decisions are being made and, and taking up the space to be there and how important that is. Um, 
And so, uh, you know, I think that's a really exciting perspective uh, to bring in um, with the City Board or Commission. Um, so with that, uh, I move approval of Tulani Davis's appointment to the Arts Council. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to forward the appointment. Um, I lost my page. Uh, oh boy, Tulani Davis um, to the Arts Council with a positive recommendation to hold City Council. I'll never get that name right. <laughs> you got it, Councilor Labarge. You, you yeah. nailed it. <laughs> okay, any, is there any discussion? Just well, to say, well, Councillor well, Foster, that was a great description. I'm. It really it was. It's it's a great presentation. Some good people coming in, volunteering. Great in presentation. Us. I know. Okay, roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. The motion is unanimous. Okay, we have the next is on the Historical Commission, Dr. Jonathan, is it Dob? 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 It's actually, I asked about that one, it's Dobby. Dobby, okay. Dobby, before yeah, we, I, I didn't know. Before we even go into your um, conversation with him, I would like to recognize um, Councilor Michael Quinlan. Councilor Quinlan, I know you had requested to speak. I did. Um, thank you very much, Council Labarge. Uh, and Council Mayor, I'm not stealing your thunder here. Uh, I spoke <laughs> with the city solicitor this week, um, Mr. Seewald, about the fact that Dr. Uh, Dobe and his wife, Linda, um, contributed to my campaign in 2019. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I was uh, in the clear to participate in this discussion. Uh, and he agreed with me that there's no conflict of interest, although he did advise me that I should make a public declaration like this to the people of Northampton, just in the interest of transparency. So uh, it doesn't disqualify me, from, uh, disqualify me from participating. Um, I just wanted to let people know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Councillor. Okay, so Councillor Mayor, can you give us your report on your comp conversation with Dr. Jonathan W. Well, there's no thunder to steal because I'm no Councillor Foster, but I, I'll, I'll try. Um, yes, I, had, I actually have had the pleasure of um, just getting to know uh, Jonathan or Dr. Dalby. Uh, but, um, he's on our uh, weekly Northampton Neighbors conversation, conversations. And I mean, his skill set, I'm sure um, Councillor Quinlan knows a bit about him, but it's just amazing. He's just a very accomplished guy. Talk about being overqualified, no, no, not only living through a lot of this history, but also um, his background. He's been you know, a school superintendent. He's been president of many universities. He's been on charter review committees. He's been on historical commissions. Um, he has been presented to the queen. So <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to beat that. And you know, it's interesting. He's actually quite relatively new, I, I believe like four or five years here um, in Northampton. And, but he, he, you know, clearly a guy who really uh, likes to be connected to the community and would like to get on the historical commission to, you know, bring his, obviously his, his myriad background, but to look, uh, to, to learn more about Northampton, Northampton by looking at community history. And he, he thinks that looking at, you know, looking at, um, um, and acknowledging um, one's community, the history of one's community is, is, a, is a part of a community building step. So I, I clearly think he'll be a great asset. Um, and I think we're really fortunate that he moved to our community because he's got a lot to give. So I, um, I would fully recommend uh, Dr. Jonathan Dalby for the Historical Commission. Thank you, Second. Councilor. So we have a motion and a second to forward the appointment of Dr. Jonathan Duby to the Historical Commission with a positive recommendation to full city council. Roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay. The motion is unanimous. The next historical commission is Reverend Harvey Hill. And Councilor Quinlan, can you give us your report on your conversation with the applicant, Reverend Harvey Hill, please? 
I can. Thank you very much. It was a real pleasure to uh, spend a few minutes on the phone with uh, Reverend Harvey Hill. Uh, he's he's a, a longtime family friend. We actually, he and his family moved to Northampton in 2007 when his wife was filling a temporary vacancy at Smith College. Uh, Harvey was a deacon then and then was ordained into the priesthood of the Episcopal Church. Uh, his home church was St. John's on the Smith campus at the time. Uh, they moved back to Georgia in 2009 but realized that they really loved it here and then moved back to Northampton in 2011. As he puts it, we finally settled here and plan to retire and die here, hopefully not too soon. Uh, he's currently the rector at Agawam St. David's Church. And that's really was an interesting part of our discussion because his um, he just kind of had this feeling about historical preservation and integrity that he didn't want to see buildings changed ever. And now that he's this, the rector of this church and it's a historical space, he feels that he sees this as a, a living faith community and the building must be able to change to meet the needs of the community. So sometimes you have to maybe make some, some concessions on that. Uh, so it makes him an interesting um, member of the historical commission. And you know, he also mentioned, uh, lastly, I'll just mention that he, he has said he wanted to be involved in Northampton somehow. Uh, he loves local history. He's a member of Historical Northampton. And when he started looking at vacancies on the various municipal boards and committees, this seemed like a great fit. Uh, so all of that said, I put forward Harvey Hill with a positive recommendation to the Historical Commission. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to forward the appointment of Reverend Harvey Hill to the Historical Commission with a positive recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Motion is unanimous. We're getting there. Okay, um, new business. Um, we need to talk about what department we would like to have come in for the month of March. And we can do a little bit of talking right now about it. We got about four or five minutes here. Um, any suggestions so that Laura could start calling and see if we can get some of the department heads to come in? I don't know if Councillor Foster Oh, Laura, I'll defer to you. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, I'm remembering that you guys had asked at the last meeting to have Keith Benoit, um, the ADA coordinator, come in to talk about the grant oh, that's right. for right. access in March. So, okay. That was and I also think already. we should look at the Senior Center with the director, Marie Westberg. They've been highly involved working with the, with the city, with the seniors here. So I, I think we need to look at that picture. That's a big one. Okay, so sometime in April, Councillor Foster. And additionally, and, and I'm not attached to um, exact time frame, but I would love to speak with the mayor's office regarding their process for these appointments for boards and commissions. Because um, mm -hmm. I realize we're, we're approving them, but it would be pretty cool if um, I, I would love to know kind of what, what the process looks like on their side, what their outreach looks like, um, you, you know, kind of a, a discussion so that, that a, each hand kind of knows what the other hand is, is doing here. It's a great idea. Yeah. I, I think that's a great idea in light of yeah. the fact that there's going to be a new mayor. Uh, so kind of understanding that exactly. process may be good for a lot of people. Right. That's because a great when suggestion. When a new mayor comes in, a lot of things can change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, all right, so we have the ADA coordinator coming in for the month of March and um, April. Why don't we shoot for what Councillor Foster was just presenting to us to see if we could get them to come in. Is that in April or um, with Keith Benoit in March? We got Keith Benoit in March, correct? Yeah. Is that what you wanted? Right. I, yeah. I, think, I think that's what we wanted, yeah. I don't know if we can fit two of them in because Keith probably will have quite a bit of information to give us. Oh, I would, I would bet he would, yeah. Yeah, and I'd, I'd like to be able to, to ask questions yeah. and not feel rushed um, with Keith. So do you prefer Councillor Foster doing it in April? Yeah, that works for me, if, if that's okay with everyone. Is it okay with the rest of the councillors? 
Okay. I'm good with it. All right. Also to Councillor Nash and I had a monthly talk. Um, him and I were working together um, on the phone of organizing what we just had on that open public session with both city service and um, community resources. And him and I talked about, we would really like to do more of that. And I think for our committee, this is a good way to reach out because we have so much concerns and we're tied, our hands are tied as far as how far we can stretch out. So if we do the open public hearings, we're gonna be able to do what we wanna do, get the people in who we'd like to speak to and so forth like that. So what do you think about it, Councilor Mayor? Uh, yeah, okay, that, that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense? Yes. Are we, I don't know if we're voting. No, you're just talking. We're just talking. Okay. We're just talking. <laughs> we can do that. Okay. All right, so um, that's about it for tonight and we need one final motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Move to adjourn. Roll call, Laura. Oh, you're, you're muted, muted, Laura. Laura. Yes. Um, Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Good night, everybody.